Welcome guys! Yes, today we're gonna have a closer look at Fornax, the new mage dragon, the Inferno Sage that looks like Godzilla and his animations are all like Godzilla. So um, let's have a look at him first of all. Let's have a look at his skills. Um, he has the ultimate skill nuclear heat source. Fornax summons a row of nuclear heat sources advancing in the design direction, dealing 1200% of his attack as damage to enemies along the way and knocking them back to the edge of the area. The nuclear heat sources then explode dealing again 1800% of its attack as damage to surrounding enemies. Allied mage dragons touched by the nuclear heat sources will gain a shield equal to 1500% of his attack for 8 seconds. So he's doing a lot of damage, knocking the enemies back and can give our teammates a shield. So it's pretty nice to put him like in the back row so you try to also hit your other mages. Um, then he has some talent effects here. Enemies touched by the nuclear heat source will be slowed by 90% and become paralyzed. Unable to cast normal skills, taking 30% more area damage, lasting for 4 seconds. So this basically keeps the enemies further away and helps all your other dragons deal more damage. Also, um, nuclear heat sources can grant invincibility for 4 seconds to the allied mage dragons they touch and can also and can also display invincibility effects from enemy dragons they touch. So this is really really awesome. This ultimate is really really cr crazy good. Then he has the spent nuclear meteorite. Fornex drops a meteor, dealing 306% of his attack as damage to all enemies in a larger area. The center of the area then explodes, causing the enemies in the center to take an additional 306% of his attack as true damage. Enemies hit by the explosion at the center of the area will be stunned for 2 seconds. So basically has an AoE stun for 2 seconds. Really awesome, especially in PvP. Um, then the meteor damage is also increased by 10% and enemies in the area are pulled a short distance to the center of the area. So it's like an, an, a black hole thing. Um, it pulls them in the middle and that's increasing the chance to get them stunned. The scorching landmine. Fornex deploys two landmines around themselves. The mines will detonate when enemies approach, dealing 800% of his attack as damage to all nearby enemies. The mines exist for 10 seconds and will disappear after 10 seconds. Uh, when they disappear, they restore 50% of his rage, so he can faster ultimate than if he didn't get touched in the time. Um, the landmine explosion will re reduce the target's enemy's rage or fury by 100 points, which is kinda awesome, especially PvP again. And after the ultimate is activated, or, no, or after this skill, the second skill is activated, two landmines are deployed at the edge of this area. So after he play, plays his dark hole skill, two mines were placed at the edge, so enemies will have it harder to get away and will have their rage reduced. That's kinda nuts in the combination. Then we have the Crimson Radiation. Fornex can be considered as an Emerald Dragon during battle formations and in battle. So he can be Cornelian or he can be an Emerald, which is kind of awesome. Um, also he can be deployed as an Emerald Dragon in the Dragonfall Valley. 15 seconds after the battle begins, Fornex immediately gains 600 range and reduces the rage or fury of all enemy units by 160 points. That's also again a really really big uh, crowd control CC. Um, he can ultimate, he reduces the ultimate of the whole team. Um, this effect will trigger early when an enemy enters your sides of the arena or of the area. This effect can only be triggered once per battle. Each time cast an area, each time our chameleon dragons cast an area damage skill, they restore HP equal to 400% of Fornex's attack. When the emergency device is triggered, another allied mage dragon with the lowest current rage also recovers 600 points of rage. 
So it basically also helps another mage from us to get instant his ultimate. This is really awesome. So for the gear um, I went with the Calamity set for PvP. Um, also keep in mind um, the Surge set mm, will be better uh, in PvE because it's doing more damage. It increases the AoE damage and he is basically AoE. So I will buy it when I'm done with him. We we'll buy it a second set on him, which have the search set. Um, yeah, um, we have the calamity thunder strike here. You see, it's not that good. I rolled two times in resist. Pretty bad rolls. Uh, it was like the best that I had at the moment. This is also not a good piece. My pieces are pretty bad at the moment. I don't find good pieces lately. This is kind of okay. He has two times crit damage. We have here crit damage and a little bit of crit damage. This piece is awesome. Finally a good piece here. Um, kind of like the best piece for me. And here a little bit crit damage. Uh, you have to keep in mind I have my Dragonlings very high. So your first thing is to get the crit rate to in game to 100%. And afterwards you focus to get more crit damage and more attack but your first priority is crit rate so I have a lot of passive crit rate so I don't went into crit rate here yeah guys so let's test him out in PvE and then let's test him out in PvP so PvE there is not much what I can uh, show now we can go in the daily challenge but I talked to you something about what I did yesterday, so i show you a screenshot, one second. So yesterday I did the Nocturne Expedition, the stage 12-1, 12-1 this was, and I used the phone X there, and I made a screenshot with my mobile phone, you see, not the best quality, but I hope you can see that he did 10 billion damage, while my Astra only did 5.7 and my Ymir only did 5.2 and my Erebus 5.2 and the Agni 4.6 billion. So he did really really awesome in the Nocturne Expedition, guys. He's doing good damage, he has good CC, he has good control, you don't need any healers in the team then. So keep this in mind, pretty pretty nuts. Let's test him out in the daily challenge. Let's see what he can do here, just put him in. And yeah, just put a mage team in here. I do this real quick one second. So this is basically how I line up my mage teams at the moment. You see all five mages inside. Obviously the Merylis uh, trainer, the Codex of the Energy. Yeah, here we have nothing like really for them. We have to take the Magic Dragon Signet and here the new War Banner. Just have one copy of it, but it's fine. That's what I use here. We just skip this through and see how much damage he can do on a single target because yeah, can't really see AoE but you already see he's doing 367 million which is the most so he's doing good damage. So that's it, let's test him out in some PvP. So I set up my team for PvP too, um, you see we're fighting here against a mixed team, mages, rogues and the pangu. Let's go in, let's see how this works out. Um, yeah, you see my arrows died instantly, but we did a good chunk of damage here from the fornex, I think it was, and he destroyed, um, yeah, he destroyed three people instantly. So it was good and yeah, Erebus and Agni died very fast, so let's check out the more fights. Here we're fighting a mirror team, you see the enemy team is super strong, let's just see how this works out on mirror teams. Yeah, my Erebus is instant dead, my whole team is instant dead, so yeah, you think I have no chance against real rails, so yeah, it's just uh, Ymir instant ulted and um, killed all my team. That's what I said PvP is like. The one who first ultimates wins the fight. 
Let's see what we have here. We have a fight against summoners. Let's see what we can do against summoners. Um, what is really great here, you see he's counting as a Cornelian and as an Emerald. It's not only he's counting as one of those, what you need, but he's counting as both. So let's see, maybe we get something going on here. I can also think that maybe he's pretty good in the front row because he puts the landmines at his spot um, and also instantly reduces the rage of the enemies. I will test that out. Uh, let's replace it. Let's retry the fight I lost. We go in on the fight that I lost instantly. Let's try if it changes something. Um, if we put him in the front, maybe he puts the mines better and that helps no it's just the enemy you see he ultimates instant and i lose the fight so here you can uh, go against another summoner team pretty equal in the power i put him in the middle row and put agni to the back row and see how this goes see this is our demise and yeah this uh, looks really good Ymir did really awesome damage. Fornix like also 30 million damage, so... He's doing good, he's doing good. Not gonna lie, my Astreos is just not getting any hits off, cause the other did all the work, that's awesome. Let's see what he can do here against some tank team. I found a tank team, hard to find actually at the moment tank teams. Most people not mostly use tanks, but you see... This goes quick there. He did not much like the others. It was just the me and Agni doing something here in this fight. Yeah guys, uh, that's almost everything that I can test here on the battles. Um, I think here, let's rate him. Um, his rating for PvE, I think he's SSS tier for PvP, for PvE. And I also think he's SSS tier for PvE. He's not incredible, so he's not over SSS, but he's super super strong. So yeah, I keep him in the SSS tier. He's the good release. I like him. I like to play with him. And I yeah, I can only um, tell you to get him and enjoy him. Guys, hope you liked the video. Hit the like and subscribe button. And yeah, we'll see us in the next videos. Peace. You're as I want.